In this video, I'm going to walk you through the entire quit by healing process for quitting porn and using the process of quitting porn as a springboard to level up your life. You can see the basic outline right here, and I'm going to go through all of the components of this process as quickly as possible while also delivering as much information as possible. So let's jump right in. As you can see, we have these five main chapters, and the first one is breaking the habit loop. The first part is to become aware of the true cost of porn and the real harms it does. Most people who come to the point where they want to quit their porn habit, which is already further than most people get, but most people realize, okay, this is somehow not good for me. I'm doing too much of this. You maybe notice that your tastes in pornography are getting more and more extreme and you're uncomfortable with that. But likely you're not actually aware of the full extent of the harm this does. And it turns out that understanding the harms also helps you break the habit because it's very tightly tied to how habits work in the brain, how the habit loop works, and how things like porn become addictive. Now, once you realize the true cost, the next step is to accept the quest. And I have a separate video that talks all about that. It is very helpful to realize that what you're doing here is not just trying to eliminate some bad habit out of your life and everything else will stay the same. In fact, that probably won't work. If you want to actually fully heal from your porn addiction and not have that be something that you're forever coping with, that you're forever resisting and struggling with, then you have to change many parts of your life. You really can't treat something like a porn addiction as a completely isolated issue. It is very closely tied into many other circumstances in your life and many other aspects of your lifestyle. Fully resolving this really does mean leveling up your life as a whole. And you gotta accept that quest, you gotta accept that, okay, this porn addiction is the dragon that I am going to slay and I have to go on a hero's journey. I have to go on a quest in order to do this. Next, we look at the two parts of porn addiction, which are basically one is the, let's say the mechanical part of the habit. You have fallen into a habit and it's been so strongly reinforced that it's basically become an addiction. That's one part. The second part is the underlying psychological part. Almost every porn addict will have some issues around sexual shame, sexual performance anxiety, maybe a history of negative experiences with dating and your love life. Maybe also a lot of negativity towards women, maybe a lot of self-worth issues and so on. And if you don't resolve those, things, then just trying to get rid of the porn habit by itself is actually not going to get you very far. With all that out of the way, we are basically ready to break the habit. Now, this comes down to understanding how habits work in terms of how they work in your brain and in your nervous system. And this part is actually the easy part. I don't mean to upset anyone by saying that because I know that some people struggle a lot and for a long time with this. But for the most part, you've probably been doing the wrong things. Most people, unfortunately, have no idea how habits actually work, how the brain works in relation to habits. And therefore, your solutions are probably not going to work. When you understand the habit loop, I have a separate video about that too, and you know what triggers you, and you are very strategic about interrupting and changing those triggers, it's actually much easier than you probably think to break the habit loop. And more specifically, what we generally want to do is we want to look at how to change the environment and how to change your triggers and introduce friction into the process. Human behavior is a result of environment much more than we think it is. We tend to think, and it's a bit self-flattering to think this, that we it's about choice, that we choose the actions we take. But in reality, many of the decisions we make are really a function of the environment we find ourselves in. Now, hypothetically, if you could kind of airdrop yourself into a completely different environment where porn doesn't exist, then you would behave differently. You would do things differently immediately without having to make other decisions. This is what environment change is about, to recognize what are the things around you that trigger you and either remove those things or add friction to the process so that basically you introduce new steps, new obstacles on the way that usually seamlessly gets you from whatever you're doing into the porn addiction, into the porn habit. And then that makes the entire quitting process that much easier. So that is the habit component, but that is not the end of it. The next step, and this is crucial, is about awareness. One of the qualities of an addiction is a lack of awareness. And I'm sure you've noticed this. You basically switch into autopilot mode. It maybe feels like you lose control or you, don't even realize how you got there, right? You you find that, oh, 
I did the thing again that I wanted to avoid. I don't even know how I got here. I, I can't remember really what happened. That's because autopilot takes over. Your conscious brain basically shuts down. And therefore, what we need to do is we need to bring awareness. We need to stop ourselves from dropping into this autopilot mode and instead bring awareness to what's actually happening. There are two tools that you will learn in this process. One is embodiment and the other is introspective writing. So very briefly, embodiment is a very simple but extremely powerful technique where you tune into what is happening in your body. You tune into the physical sensations. For example, when you are feeling the urge, right? When you're feeling that urge and you start like, uh oh, I'm, I'm getting into this struggle. The habit is kicking in and I have this strong urge to go back to that routine, to go back to watching porn. And this can take all kinds of forms. But what you can do is in that moment, tune into the physical sensations that you're experiencing in that moment. So ask yourself, where in my body am I feeling the urge? Where in my body am I feeling? whatever else I might be feeling, the anger, the frustration, the hopelessness, and you tune into that physical sensation, this is an extremely effective way to bring awareness to what you're doing. And you'll also find that it often deflates these feelings very quickly when you learn how to do this right. The second tool is introspective writing, which is essentially externalizing the internal process. So it's the same idea. You feel the urge come up, and instead of just like being frustrated, trying to resist it with your mind, you start writing about it. You start writing out, what am I experiencing right now? What are the thoughts that are going through my head? What does this remind me of? And there's different questions you can ask, like dig deeper. And what happens is that the more aware you become of the process, the more aware you become of the patterns you tend to fall into, of your physical and mental and emotional habits, the less power they have over you. The next part here is the hero's journey. We've already talked about this in the context of accepting the quest. And here it becomes important again, because as you bring awareness to this, you essentially are paying more attention to the struggle that you're going through. Now, most of us want to avoid that struggle. Most of us want some easy immediate solution, right? And you have to become aware that unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, real growth doesn't work like that. Right? Real growth is not, I just flipped the switch and it solved all my problems. I took a pill and it solved all my problems. Real growth is always a hero's journey and it always follows a very similar pattern. This is important because it helps you reframe what's going on so that you can understand that when you're struggling, when you're going through certain experiences, this isn't a sign that you're weak or that you're doing something wrong. It's actually a sign that you're going in the right direction. It is a bit like in a video game, if you, you know, go into a new room and it's full of enemies, that's basically a good sign because it means you're going the right way. And this also relates to the next point, which is developing the warrior's attitude. The warrior's attitude is the opposite of the avoidant attitude that most people bring to any challenge, really. We want to avoid the unpleasant feelings. We want to avoid the struggle. We want to not have to go through the process of kicking the habit because it's a hard and frustrating process. The warrior's attitude is going, instead of going, oh, don't, 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 I don't want to experience this. You go, I want to experience this, bring it on. Let's do the suffering. Let's experience the suffering of this transformational process. And there are specific tools you can use to develop this. And ironically, saying yes to the suffering, saying yes to the struggle makes the whole thing a lot easier. Next up, another super important chapter is all about healthy dopamine. So the reason your brain got addicted to porn in the first place is closely related to dopamine. In short, things like porn, and porn is not the only thing like this, it's just one of the strong examples. Things like porn are dopamine overstimulants. Porn puts your brain on a certain kind of dopamine roller coaster that you get hooked on. And it's overriding what is actually a natural and healthy process. And this is one of the ways in which the quit by healing process is a bit different from other approaches to quitting porn that you might have seen. Just trying to eliminate the porn habit out of your life itself is not enough because you're currently doing this like there's a natural drive inside you that has essentially been hijacked by porn. If we just remove the porn, something's missing. You have to do something with that drive. So Part of the process is to heal your brain from this overstimulation, but also an equally part, important part is to introduce healthy dopamine activities. So this is what we look at when we talk about how and why your body craves healthy dopamine and what healthy dopamine is in the first place. So we talk about 
this, the dopamine addiction cycle, and the difference between junk dopamine, which is like junk food, and whole dopamine, which is like whole food, like healthy food, right? Like once you understand this, then you see why all the next bits are so important and why they are what they are, which is, first of all, combat sports and lifting, two of probably the best examples of how to get healthy dopamine, of how to give your body what it actually craves. In short, healthy dopamine is goal-oriented activity that gives you a sense of accomplishment or a sense of progress. Lifting, exercising, you know, this can be CrossFit, weightlifting, anything like that, right? Going to the gym and working out is a great example of healthy dopamine, right? You crave, you have the craving for activity. Dopamine is like activating. It is trying to push you to go out and do something. So you go to the gym, you lift weights. It's super healthy for your body. It does all kinds of positive things for you internally, like mentally and physically. But also you get the experience of like accomplishment. I've done the thing. I finished the workout. I worked up a sweat and you get stronger over time, which becomes, you know, some people would say it becomes addictive, right? The progress you make in the gym can become addictive. Although in this case, addictive is not the right word because it's not something you're trying to stop, but you can't stop. This is actually the healthy dopamine cycle. It's like you do something that's good for you and the reward you get, the rewarding feeling you get makes you do more of the thing that's good for you. That's the kind of habit loop that we want to be in. The other one listed here is combat sports. Now for men, Combat sports are an incredibly useful tool, probably one of the best things you can do, again, to get healthy dopamine and also to you know, socialize more, to get a healthy sense of community and this kind of thing. That's all kind of built in to combat sports in a way that you don't necessarily get from lifting. Learning combat sports is a great way to challenge your body, challenge your brain, learn new skills. It's also a very humbling activity in a very good way. There's always someone who can kick your ass. There's always people to look up to. There's always people to learn from no matter how good you get. And it's a great way to essentially work with, familiarize yourself with and channel the natural healthy kind of male aggression, or again, that drive, maybe aggression is even the wrong word, but like that drive to want to have an impact on the world. Combat sports are a great way to work with that, familiarize yourself with that, and also process that. Next, let's talk about cold exposure and other forms of no-go training. So cold exposure is great for this, especially something like an ice bath. So more so than a cold shower, an ice bath, a cold bath, is fantastic because what happens when you step into a cold bath? Immediately, your whole body says, let's get out. This is bad. This is this feels terrible. Let's get out. And in order to stay in, you essentially have to train a certain part of your brain that is like the no, right? The suppressing part of your brain, the no-go circuit. This is a perfect example of impulse control. You experience the cold, you experience the pain of cold exposure, you have the impulse to jump out right away, and you control that impulse. Like anything, the more you do this, the better you get at it. For obvious reasons, this is really good if you're wanting to control an addiction. You're essentially learning to feel the impulse and stop it. So that's an immediate and obvious benefit of doing this kind of training, but also cold exposure specifically is another example of really good healthy dopamine release. And then finally, on the topic of healthy dopamine, we also get to the skill crucible and challenging projects. There needs to be something that is your skill pursuit. There needs to be something that you're working on and becoming excellent at, something where you are increasing your competence. And this is important for two main reasons. The first is the same as I've been talking about so far. This is what dopamine is trying to get you to do. And as long as you are not overstimulating that dopamine cycle with other stuff like porn and social media and video games and this kind of stuff, this is what's meant to happen. You have this drive to become excellent at something, to create things, to make something of yourself. That's what we want to develop. The other reason this is important is because as a man, the world judges you by your capability. Now, not everyone will admit this, and maybe especially in the current environment, people are likely to tell you, no, you know, everybody's valid, just the same, everybody has, has worth and so on, which is true, right? You have intrinsic value as a human being, but people judge you by your capability. There's really no way around that. I think this is probably pretty much hardwired in our biology. And it's not just other people who judge you by your capability. It's ultimately also you yourself. You judge yourself by your capability as well, whether you realize it or not. Porn addiction is both a cause of and a result of 
mental health problems. So that's also a self-reinforcing loop where the more porn you consume, the worse your mental health gets, but also the worse your mental health is, the more you will reach for overstimulating addictive things like porn. One of the best things you can do to improve your mental health is to be active, to do things in the world, to learn skills and to start experiencing yourself as capable. Now on that note, let's move on to a more internal part of this process, which is about a healing process which happens largely through shadow work. I split this into three categories here. So we have the relationship with the self, where we have to look at your level of self-acceptance and self-worth. Because once again, this is for many people, this is, these are very low. You have low self-acceptance. You might have quite negative and even abusive self-talk in your head. You might have serious self-worth issues. And this kind of suffering makes you look for the pain relief that you get from an activity like watching porn. So this is another example that shows us that just removing the porn habit itself is not enough because you're using the porn to numb the pain that comes from a lack of self-acceptance and low self-worth. So we have to address these issues, otherwise that pain will drive you back to the habit or it will drive you to some other habit, right? You end up just you know, finding another thing to get addicted to in order to numb the pain and that wouldn't be very useful either. Now there are some introspective writing and shadow work exercises we can do to address self-acceptance and self-worth, but also importantly, we want to get into what are your values so that you can align the way you live by your values, which is basically what integrity is about. What that leads to is true confidence. Whenever you look at, you know, if you search for something like how to be more confident, you'll find a lot of stuff that's very surface level. You know, speak like this, stand like this, this kind of posture makes you confident, that kind of stuff, right? But true confidence comes from within. It's not something, it's not an act you put on. True confidence comes from within. And the shortest way I can summarize it is that if you're clear about your values and you live by those values, that generates real deep confidence. And then it also brings us back to the topic of competence. You need to be developing your competence and that builds a foundation and builds a track record that over time makes you more confident, makes you more comfortable with yourself, makes you kind of more solid. And that also helps dissolve self-worth and self-acceptance related issues. So that is the relationship with the self. Our next chapter is the relationship with masculinity. So lots of people who have a porn habit do not have a positive relationship with their own masculinity and their own desire. Here, you can do some exercises to explore the roots of your sexual shame. If you have, basically we wanna dig out, and this is shadow work, right? We wanna dig out the shadow of how you relate to sex and sexuality and your own desire. Unfortunately, many boys and men are shamed for their masculine urges, for their masculine expressions, and are shamed for their sexual desires and their sexual urges. And this shame can get internalized and it can lead you to essentially, you, you basically feel bad about, rather than feeling like your sexual desire your desire for another person is a gift you can give them, you feel like there's something wrong with me and I'm imposing myself on this other person. And so you try to shut that down, but then by pressing it down, you essentially make this problem worse. Like the, the desire that you're trying to push down is trying to find another escape valve and you have to deal with it. And the way you deal with it is you watch porn. You essentially watch porn to get rid of these feelings that you associate as negative. So we can do some shadow work in specifically in the realm of the sexual in order to resolve some of these issues. And really what we wanna to get to is embracing your masculinity, embracing your full power of masculinity, not holding that back, not feeling like it is, it is a bad thing that needs to be hidden from the world. And instead being fully comfortable with it and saying, this is a gift I can offer to the world. And it's up to people to either accept it or reject it, but that does nothing to me. Again here, unfortunately, most guys have the finger wagged at them all the time. Which is, don't do this, don't do that, you know, oh, like the Gillette ad kind of thing. Don't be the creep who goes talk to a girl and stuff like that, right? Instead of saying, okay, you have these desires and you're, you see a beautiful girl and it does something to you, 
let's learn what to do with this. Let's learn how to do this in a way that is positive and wholesome and doesn't harm anyone, you know, isn't aggressive or pestering or anything like that. Because the truth is that the more you tell, the more you shame people for this, the more you tell guys not to do this, the more they'll try to keep the lid on it until something explodes, until something goes wrong. So the idea that you can like shame people or you have to shame people because otherwise they'll be sexually harassing or something like that is completely counterproductive. You have to teach guys how to deal with this because we can't just turn it off. And funnily enough, right, this seems like a big problem in our current world. Like, oh my God, what do we do with this? Whereas, you know, for basically millennia, we dealt with this quite well. Uh, in most cultures other than Western culture, we found pretty good solutions for this. It is actually a very modern and very specific struggle in terms of culture and time. So this is a fully solvable problem. We've just somehow managed to forget all the things that work. Okay, then next, we also have to talk about the relationship with femininity and with women, because, well, a lot of guys who struggle with with dating and relationships and all that will fall into some kind of a red pill rabbit hole where it's very understandable but a lot of the red pill stuff comes from a place of, of kind of bitter you know hurt guys have been hurt and they they kind of want revenge or they're not very happy and they project a lot of their negative feelings they have about women onto all women so basically you're mad at your ex-wife who was horrible and she divorced you and you're projecting that anger at all women. A lot of guys who have a porn addiction do not have a positive relationship with women, don't have, you know, female friends or good positive female role models in their life, don't have an example of the positive, powerful, beautiful feminine in their life. And instead of that, they have a lot of pain. They have like a hole in the soul from all the pain they've experienced. And unfortunately, all the red pills in the world will not feel that. So in order to fully heal, you need to heal your relationship with the feminine and with women. And we have some very specific things we can do. So for example, the friend zone challenge, you should absolutely have female friends and you should go out and friend zone some women instead of every interaction you have with a woman being something where it's like, oh my God, I, I hope she goes to bed with me. And if she doesn't, she rejected me. And oh my God, it's so terrible. Talk to women who you're not sexually interested in like make female friends. It will absolutely change your life to have in real life interactions with real women. And funnily enough, a lot of the stuff that the red pill community claims is immediately debunked by simply knowing some women in real life. Now, another thing is to learn the dance between the masculine and feminine. And in fact, you know, one of the most practical ways to do that is to actually learn how to dance. If you learn how to dance, a couple's dance, you learn an enormous amount about how this whole interplay between masculine and feminine is supposed to work. And it's also a great way to heal your relationship with the feminine, to be around women, to learn how to interact with women, to even get that like physical touch that we all need and a lot of men are totally starving for, to get that in a platonic, safe, positive way. Uh, taking a dance class is one of the best things that most guys can do. And finally, once again, we are going to do introspective writing here to dig into this, really figure out what's going on and bring awareness to this process. Then the final part is about integration. So once we've gone through all of this, and actually let me leave this open here, right? That is like the, the whole overview here. Once we've gone through all this, it's really about just bringing all these pieces together. All of this is what leads to the outcome that we're aiming for in Quit By Healing, which is that you lose interest in porn. The goal is always to not be someone who struggles with a porn addiction for the rest of your life. And I want to be very clear about this. This is 100% possible, okay? Like probably everyone who's watching this, I discovered porn at much too young of an age and I got properly addicted to it. And I tried to quit several times and it was difficult and all this kind of stuff. But right now, I wanna be clear about this. I have zero interest in porn. Seeing pornographic images or nudes or anything like that does not trigger me. You could sit me down right now in front of a computer that has Pornhub open on it and I would just walk away. I'm just not interested. I want to be really clear about this because too many people settle for somehow being able to keep the urges under control. And to me, as long as that's the case, even if you've been clean for thousands of days, you still haven't actually solved the real problem. So that is complete healing, getting to the point where porn is just completely uninteresting to you. And how do we do that? Well, that only works 
by integrating all the steps in this process. The process is designed to really dig out the roots of this issue and one by one solve all of the components of this issue. And yes, this takes some time, but it is worth doing because this is what makes you a complete man. The way you show up in the world, the way you feel about yourself and the way other people perceive you changes drastically when you have done this work. By the time you get here, and in fact, long before you get here, you realize that quitting your porn addiction is about much more than just this one habit. And you realize that there is actually a huge opportunity here. If you use this, this current struggle you have, the challenge you have of trying to overcome this really bad habit and you use it to propel you into this process, you will be amazed at where you can end up in life. All right, so that is the entire quit by healing process. I'm currently writing a book about how to do this step by step. In the meantime, make sure that you join the Discord. It's going to be the first link in the description. There you can get help from me and my team. We can help you with accountability. You can join the challenges we do there and we will help you go through this process even before the book becomes available. Also, let me know which of these steps you want to know more about. Let me know what I should do videos on because even before the book is finished, I will be teaching this process. I will be breaking this down and you can get it all here. So let me know what you want to know next. Let me know where you need the most help and I will make content to help you out.